All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is my full breakdown, the full shebang on college football conference realignment in the summer of 2024. What do I think is going to be happening within the ACC and then possibly the triple down effects that inevitably will happen with the American conference, with the Mountain West conference? Yeah, we could get more big stuff. And, and really, where does all this lead if these conferences actually expand past 20 teams? I think we first have to look at the SEC making a play here. And I'm just going to show this graphic. This is not like a perfect indication of the overall values of these programs, but the ACC, where they are right now, they added Stanford, they added Cal, they added SMU. All three of those teams are obviously going to be in this league for the long haul. They're not going anywhere. I don't think the ACC is getting blown up or anything like that. But I do think they are basically going to become, whether it's this summer or next summer, a shell league, more like a group of five league based on the amount of teams that do end up leaving. Although, although there is a chance that the ACC, even with big losses, could still have a stable league that could compete against the Big 12, depending on which teams they're able to poach from the American and from the Mountain West Conference. Now, you take a look at this, you've got Florida State, you've got Clemson. Those two teams made a lot of noise, especially for Florida State, but also Clemson during the season last year, a lot of people don't remember, you know, there was a rumor, maybe a big announcement that Clemson was talking about leaving. I think both Florida State and Clemson are gone to the SEC. And I know there's been no real rumors about the SEC. You've got their commissioner coming out saying, look, we're happy right now. We don't want to dilute any values. But think about the SEC. They're still obsessed with keeping it regional in the South. If they actually want to add more teams, this is the perfect fit. It's Florida State and it's Clemson, and that's where I think both of those teams will be going this summer. I think it's, listen, this is coming to a head at some point. FSU has made so much stink about leaving this conference, about trying to argue, you know, their new argument now is that they didn't want SMU, Stanford, Cal in the conference to dilute values. Those three teams end up joining and now they're pissed off, even though those three teams will not be getting the full ACC value right away. That's what happens when you join a new conference. It's just like when Rutgers and Maryland joined the Big Ten about a decade ago. But either way, FSU is trying to do anything possible to get the buyout as low as possible so they can leave for less money. I think, you know, in a favorable Florida court setting, they're going to be able to get out of this horrible, terrible grant of rights deal for not minimal costs, but for less than has been projected they would pay because, I mean, the costs are just so absorbent. When it comes to Clemson, I think Clemson is in a similar spot as FSU. Now, the thought is that if they can rally eight teams to vote to leave the ACC, the conference can dissolve. I just don't see that happening. Like, there are teams, number one, you already have the three newcomers, although I'm not sure if the three newcomers will have that type of power right away. But Wake Forest is not going anywhere. Boston College is not going anywhere. You would think that Georgia Tech is not going anywhere, but there is some interest from the Big Ten. That's because of the Atlanta area. I don't think it's happening. I think it's a weird fit with Georgia Tech possibly to the Big Ten. This is what I think the Big Ten does. But, but number one, let me just get back to my point, and then I'll talk about the Big Ten. I don't want to go in a hundred different places. My overall point is that I don't think there's a big enough incentive for these other teams to say, oh yeah, we want out of this uh, ACC terrible TV deal because, you know, teams like Wake Forest, Boston College, Georgia Tech, maybe NC State, they're not going to be led into the Big Ten or the SEC and the Big 12. Is it really worth leaving and uprooting the history of the ACC to join the Big 12? I don't see it. So right now, my speculation would be FSU and Clemson going to the SEC, the SEC evening the number of conference teams with the Big Ten, and then the question is, do we get really clownish and see if the Big Ten decides to counter with possibly Miami? I think the Big Ten is very interested in Miami. Miami fits in the Big Ten. They want the geographical footprint in Florida, that would be a huge get for the Big Ten. Does that happen next? And really, you would have to think there'd be an incentive for Miami to also try and leave the ACC if FSU and Clemson are able to get out of this terrible 
TV deal. There's probably some opening that Miami might be able to take. Would they be headed to the Big Ten? You take a look at a team like North Carolina. Now, North Carolina, it's a little bit more complicated because there's been rumors that, oh, North Carolina and NC State have to be in the same conference. People saying that NC State is more powerful than North Carolina. I find that very hard to believe. I understand NC State is a bigger school in terms of total student body, but when you look at North Carolina, not just their football program, I mean, listen, North Carolina and NC State are comparable in terms of football. I still think North Carolina, at least recently, has been a little bit better, but that might be recently recency bias. Certainly, North Carolina has not had a crazy good football program over the, next, over the last decade, but their basketball program would be wanted by the Big Ten, and I think the Big Ten would be fine if they take North Carolina. They could also take Duke, and you could keep that rivalry going in the Big Ten, and I think if North Carolina goes somewhere, see, right now, North Carolina is a really weird one because it's like they've got Duke and NC State attached to their hip. There's a lot of speculation. Can North Carolina actually go to a different conference without NC State based on the in-state laws in North Carolina but it could be North Carolina and Duke both going to the Big Ten. Those would be pure basketball academic ads by the Big Ten. Obviously, neither of those two schools do much in terms of football, but I'm just saying normally with realignment, you'll get one conference making a big move and that'll be it. That's why I think FSU and Clemson are the only things that happen this summer. And then the speculation starts on Miami, North Carolina, Duke, maybe Georgia Tech, I'm sure, if the ACC starts going belly up, you're going to hear about Georgia Tech to the Big Ten because the Big Ten wants that Atlanta metro area. Maybe it doesn't end up happening, but I'm just saying that's going to be something that's rumored. That's going to be a talking point. FSU Clemson, it makes too much sense. If the SEC wants to expand to match the Big Ten, those are the two schools. You could also make an argument and say Miami instead of FSU and then maybe FSU to the Big Ten. All right, I could buy that. I don't know if FSU has the academics to make something like that happen going to the Big Ten. You could also say the Big Ten is done. They're at 20 teams. They don't want to dilute it anymore. They got their West Wing just like I predicted they would get because the idea of just two West Coast schools and all of the travel is so out of control. And that brings me to the next point. If FSU and Clemson do leave, you know, you can say Big Ten, SEC, wherever, wherever they end up going, the ACC is going to try and immediately replace those. And where does the ACC look? I think they look out west because they want to mitigate the travel issues for Cal and Stanford. And you're looking at teams like a San Diego State. You're looking at a team like a UNLV in Las Vegas. Yep. And you're looking at possibly in the American Conference, maybe a Memphis as another option. Now, Memphis is getting a big-time stadium renovation. San Diego State just got a brand-new stadium. These are stable group of five programs that the ACC, and this is why I think the ACC is still going to be around, because they were proactive. They added teams before they even lost anyone. That's smart. That's what you should be doing. That's what the Pac-12 failed to do. You go on the offensive, and then when you lose teams, you at least already have the team supplemented. You're not scrambling. You know, you can make your arguments, Cal, Stanford, SMU, how much value do they really bring in terms of football? And, you know, probably not much, but just in general, those teams are still, they were two of them were at least Power 5 teams. SMU is a team that has a lot of boosters, a lot of NIL opportunities. They're joining a conference that they could see as winnable. And the conference, the ACC, I think, will stay together. The issue is for the ACC, does it fully cannibalize? And then the other issue is how clownish do we really get with these conferences? I'm talking about the Big Ten and, and maybe even the Big 12. If things go crazy bad, maybe some of these lower end teams like a Georgia Tech would look to the Big 12. I'm sure the Big 12 would be very interested in getting that area, getting into that area and then you've got a team like Miami. I think Miami would at least get to the Big Ten or the SEC. But the clownish nature of college football to where we're talking about 22-24 team conferences, at a certain point, all of this is going to have to be changed to where the entire structure, I think, is going to have to be redone because the conferences are just going to be too big to the point where if you've got a 24-team conference, you could have three or four teams that have a claim at making their conference championship game. 
It's not like there's 100 games in college football every year. You know, every team has 100 games on their schedule. It's a limited number of games. So if you get bigger and bigger conferences, these teams are not going to face each other in the regular season. And you're talking about three teams tied with an 11-1 record and none of them faced each other in the regular season. It is a complete mess at a certain point, and I think 20 should be the limit. I think this is it. Let the SEC get their two teams. The ACC can counter with, you know, some American teams, maybe scooping up Memphis, maybe scooping up. I know people are talking about Boise State. Boise State, believe it or not, even though they're a really good school, they've got a great history. They've got one of the best winning percentages in FBS. They, uh, you know, in terms of realignment, are not very attractive because of their TV market because of how small the school they are and things like that. So in general, this is what I believe is going to happen. Look, more things could happen, but I do think FSU and Clemson end up in the SEC. This just fits the SEC too well. You could say it's going to be Clemson and Miami instead of FSU and then maybe FSU to the Big Ten. I don't think the Big Ten is going to be adding anyone this summer. That's just my speculation. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe the Big Ten says we want 24 teams. We want to get into Florida. We want to get into Georgia, and we'll take Georgia Tech. Maybe we want the rivalry and the academics between Duke and North Carolina. All of those are potential options. What I will say is I'm fairly confident that the ACC will still exist. You already have the three teams. You're going to have Boston College. You're going to have Wake Forest. I mean, you know, Boston College and Wake Forest, nothing against those programs, but they would be in a similar spot that Washington State and Oregon State are in if the ACC went full-on implosion because I don't think they would be wanted by the Big 12 at that point. Like, NC State's a program the Big 12 would certainly be interested in. Georgia Tech has a program the Big 12 would certainly be interested in. Virginia is a program we've heard rumored to the Big 10 because of their academics and their basketball prestige. But if you're just asking me right now, it's like Boston College, Wake Forest, the three that just joined, Virginia, Georgia Tech, NC State, Virginia Tech, you're getting to like seven or eight schools. I don't think any of those schools are leaving the conference. So even if they do lose the big boys, FSU, Clemson, North Carolina, Miami, even if they, the the, the key thing for the ACC is somehow keeping the Duke, North Carolina rivalry. That's so key for the ACC. So key. Even if they lose some of these other schools. I mean, because the thing you have to understand, Florida State's never been good at basketball. Clemson's never been good at basketball. Miami, you know, they've had some runs, but they're a weird team with basketball. It's not like they have a great history. It's not like you're losing much for basketball if you want to try and swing it if you are the ACC and say, look, this is tough. Maybe the ACC goes on the offensive and says, we want Gonzaga for basketball, although that really wouldn't make much sense based on the travel, and I I highly doubt Gonzaga would do that. They would more rather join the Big 12. At least that's always been the rumor But either way, I do think the ACC will stay together. They will go on the offensive after losing two teams and possibly try and get Memphis. And then they're going to want another team out West because the travel issues, you want at least one, maybe two teams from out West. And that's when you look at teams like San Diego State and like UNLV in Las Vegas. Those would be the two teams I would look at if they do decide to go to the American Conference you would be looking at a team, in my opinion, as long as they get their stadium renovation like Memphis possibly to join the ACC if they end up losing multiple teams. I think the key thing will be, obviously, the first domino, what happens to FSU and Clemson? Are they even able to get out of this? Are they going to, like, they have to be able to get out of this. It's, It's been far too long where FSU is publicly shaming the conference, saying the reason we missed the playoff was because the conference was so bad. It's, it's thought of as terribly, you know, FSU is in really bad standing right now with the ACC and Clemson. They're not as heavy in terms of their public statements, but behind the scenes, Clemson is certainly trying to get out of this league. No doubt about it. It's just based off of numbers and just how asinine and how horrible this deal is with ESPN where it's through 2036. You've got SEC and big 10 teams making almost double what FSU and Clemson are making, and they're going back to the negotiating table before FSU and Clemson. So it's a double whammy. I mean, it'd be one thing if this TV deal was over in 2026. No, it's 2036. It is the never-ending horrible situation. That's why FSU is making such a big deal out of this, and I do think they will be able to 
get out of this league somehow this summer. It's just gone on far too long at this point. They're going to get out. Clemson's going to get out. I think they both go to the SEC based off of the way the SEC has expanded, keeping that Southern footprint. And then the question is, does the Big Ten really try and go crazy and maybe go to 22 teams or 24 teams? I don't think it happens yet, but I do think the ACC will immediately try and replace FSU and Clemson with possibly teams from the Mountain West Conference. Maybe you could say Washington State and Oregon State, but you also have to wonder, and this is nothing against Washington State and Oregon State, are Washington State and Oregon State more valuable than a San Diego State, a UNLV, or a Memphis? And you would have to think, all right, Oregon State's probably more valuable. They just got their stadium renovation, but I don't know. Those teams do not have good histories. Let's just be honest. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, but either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.